Yes, yes, it took me like two days to make this actually game properly. What happened to it just work? Woo! Righto, tally the champs now. Let's see how the MacBook Pro, the new 2018 MacBook Pro with the Coffee Lake 6 core CPU games. So if you want to upgrade from Windows Home to Windows Pro or just get insanely cheap Windows and Office 2016 keys, head on down to 0 and 9. Links are in the description and I even have a discount code for you and they also have cheap gaming keys too. Now, you wouldn't buy a Mac for gaming, but just say you want a Mac. And you're not a gamer first, but you still like to play games and you just want to know, will I be actually able to game on a Mac? Well, this video is for you. And to cut a long story short, yeah, it actually can game. It can actually game fairly well. There's a few tweaks you have to do to make it game well, but it can game. And if you like these videos, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I have a lot more good content coming out very soon. Now, this model here has the Intel i7, the 2.6 gigahertz model, which is the 8850. There are two other the CPU models you can get. You can get the 8750H, which is 2.2 gigahertz, and you can also get the i9, which is the 8950H. For gaming, you're still gonna have to do my little reduce the wattage tweak if you want the best gaming experience. If you do not follow my steps and try and control how fast the CPU goes and just control the heat of it, you will get throttling issues, okay? This will throttle gaming. Now, when I game for a long period, I noticed that the actual battery was draining and the VRM was power limit throttling. There's two things here I'm gonna investigate further, but one, the power unit cannot supply enough power for when you're gaming and to the VRM's thermal throttling. I would say that this is a potential point of failure. Obviously the VRM's aren't built for this sort of gaming or just this intensity. They just needed to put better VRM's in there. But I think at the end of the day, we know it's VRM throttling and CPU throttling now. And I would say it would be a performance degradation issue rather than a failure issue. I think we would have seen these VRM's fail from the 216, the 217 models now, because at the end of the day, it's throttling down, so you're not putting any more pressure on those VRMs because it won't allow you to, it won't allow you to boost higher. So I think we would have seen some mass failures if it was going to be an issue. The only issue is, you know, we want more power and we want to not limit the VRM. So anyway, I'll investigate that. So what we have to do to get the maximum gaming performance out of this is try and control the heat on the CPU. And it doesn't matter which one, just do the same sort of thing. So you're gonna to have to download and install Intel XTU. That's the extreme tuning utility. And of course you have to be on Windows, obviously to take advantage of this. So once you download and install XTU, what you gotta do is control that wattage. So just turn this wattage down here, turn it to about 20, 20, 25, just experiment with the games you play. I find 20 is perfect. If you just leave it stock and don't control the wattage, the CPU will get up to 4 gigahertz. With this little hack here, by putting it at 20 watts, you'll get about up to 3 gigahertz on the CPU. But what this allows is the GPU to remain at 1000 megahertz. If you don't do that, the GPU will throttle as well as the CPU. So just go in there, change it to 20 watts, then it's never going to throttle. Well, so far on the games I've tested anyway. And at the end of the benchmarks, you will have some live gaming where you can see it throttling. After that, I turn the wattage down. Let's get onto the benchmarks. To sum it up, you're going to get 60 frames per second, medium settings, pretty much most games. Now, this is at 1680 by 1050. So it's slightly less resolution than 1080p, but because you have that 16 by 10 ratio display, you don't want to play the games at 1080p because you're either going to have to crop or you're going to have to stretch it and it just doesn't look good. So you're better off playing 1680 by 1050. It looks nearly as good as 1080p anyway. I don't have any complaints there. So anyway, PUBG medium settings, so that's medium textures, medium anti-aliasing and everything else on lows, you're getting 63 frames per second. Fortnite, I had high textures, but all the other settings were medium and I just tweaked the rendering resolution up a little bit and I was getting up to 90 frames per second with these settings. So high textures, everything else medium, 92 frames per second. Witcher on medium settings, 43 frames per second. Wow, I didn't expect that on Witcher. 
So you must really like AMD cars. That's 43. That competes with some of the BCs, I can tell you now. And DSX Mankind Divided, the same medium set is 42 frames per second, which again can compete with the PCs. Just again, remember it is a lower resolution, slightly lower resolution at 1050. CSGO, we have 140 frames per second. It was going up and down, but it just smashes CSGO. And you can actually play Civ 6 at the native resolution at around 40 frames per second. So that's awesome. Now, gaming with this, when I put it down to 20 watts, wasn't very loud at all. The temperatures will climb up to the 80s and 90s. That's how Apple like to run the Macs in Windows or Mac OS. That's just how they like to run it. They like to run it hot, keep the fans down. But it was one of the quieter gaming laptops. So anyway, you can look at my live gameplay now. It can certainly game. Once you do that tweak, it'll game. If not, it's going to throttle. So you're going to get fluctuations from 60 frames to, you know, 30 frames. You just do that little tweak and you've got a good little gaming device on your hand here. So anyway, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho. All right, let's play some PUBG 1680 by 1050 and see how we go here. Medium settings on textures and anti-aliasing. All the rest are on very low. So that's the settings. Um, it does actually throttle. I was playing it the other day and it wasn't throttling, so I don't know whether... The, um, telemetry wasn't reading right or I'm not sure but anyway you can see <laughs> 28 frames per second and you can see the um, GPU clock has gone down it's usually at around a thousand it's at 670 megahertz now but the CPU clock speed is indeed uh, 4 gigahertz ah there I think I've solved it it's using a lot more CPU um, than it was the other day. The other day was only like using 10% CPU. Now it's using 20% and you can see the effects of that. It's starting to throttle the CPU and the GPU. And it actually does affect performance. With the XPS 15, I was still able to maintain more than 60 frames per second. Um, even when it did throttle, this one's a bit different. Um, I mean, you don't buy a Mac for gaming. But you want to be able to play a game, you know what I mean? Casual game, whatever. And this one here, oh, I'd have to drop the settings down lower again, I guess. To get a 60 frames per second. I'll just chuck on a benchmark. How do I get the F keys back? Ooh, how do I get the F keys back? Oh. Guess I'm not doing it. But when it's performing okay and it's not throttling, we'll get around um, 60 frames per second at medium settings at this 1680 by 1050. Generally, I would say that's what it is. You're going to get fluctuations just because of that throttling. Um, actually, you're probably best to run XTU, um, the Extreme Tuner Utility from Intel. I might have a go at that myself, trying to undervolt it or at least um, try and reduce that clock speed a bit more or reduce how many watts it can actually pump into it. Just so, yeah, so the temperatures don't get so high. So I will do that. I'll go to XTU. Right, all right, all right. So now I have limited the wattage to 15 watts on the CPU and now you can see the clock speed is much lower now right so it was like 3.8 gigahertz now it's like 1.8 2.2 gigahertz now you might think well that's no good limited the um, wattage and look at the you know the frequency it's a lot lower than it was but it actually works out much better we're not going to get those fluctuations look I'm hitting those 60 frames per second I have not changed the settings at all. Sorry for these idiots talking. I wish they would just stop talking. Uh, I'll turn the volume. Uh, all right, so I've just turned down the volume. Sorry there. Um, but now we're getting the constant 60 frames per second. And we're not overwhelming the heating. Okay, and you can try this on the XPS 15 too. Um, if you're getting thermal throttling gaming, um, Try the undervolt, but also just limit the wattage. 
that it's actually using. So limit it to 15, 20 watts, whatever. I mean, the XPS cooling is a bit better than this. Um, and you'll be surprised. I'm getting more frames per second now, limiting the wattage of that CPU. The CPU is going slower. It's like, uh, like a third slower, you know, two gigahertz, 2.5, whatever, versus four gigahertz, virtually 3.8. Yet I'm still getting constant 50, 60 frames per second. And I'm not overwhelming the heating here. The actual fans are not running loud at all now. Now it will depend on games too. Like some games will require more CPU horsepower than others. So you'll have to fiddle around with your um, wattage. But as it stands now, you just limit, I've limited this to 15 and I'm getting a super ultra playable 60 frames per second. Um, no overheating whatsoever. I could probably increase that to 20 watts. It's in the mid 80s, so I reckon I've got 10 degrees to play with. So I probably can um, put 20 watts into it and get a bit better performance. But um, let's load this gun. Did I get the bullets? That's excellent. That is, that's good. I mean, who wants to do this stuff, right? You just hope it would just work out of the box. I know, you know, that does suck. But this isn't a gaming laptop, and if you want a game on it, you're going to have to do a bit of tweaking if you want a good gaming performance where it's not going to throttle. And look, mid-80s, the fans aren't even running loud, and I'm getting, you know, pretty much 60 frames per second. If I increased it to, say, 20 watts, I'm sure I'll be getting a constant 60 frames per second. The heat would go up, but I like it like this. It's not too loud. Can you hear it? Yeah, that would have to be the quietest gaming laptop I've ever used. Like, even out of all the 15-inch, like, XPS 15 or... I mean, obviously, if I'd done this to the XPS 15, the fans would be low too. But, um, you know, Aero, this is the quietest thing I've friggin', you know, heard for gaming. This is gaming flat stick now. I'm getting 60 frames per second. The fans are hardly on. Yeah, the temperatures are high. What you could do is use a fan controller to try and control the fans and increase the fans and you'll get more frames per second. But you can see there, 1.8, it's still pushing 50 frames, 60 frames per second. Very good. Very playable. I'm happy with that. 